Hi, my name is David Risley. I teach digital humanities at New York University, Abu Dhabi. My co-author, Estelle Gueville from the Louvre Abu Dhabi, will be speaking in a few minutes. The name of our presentation is Rethinking the Abbreviation, Questions and Challenges of Machine Reading Medieval Scripta. On the screen, you have an outline of our presentation. After a short introduction, we'll be speaking about our collaboration and its situation in our country, the UAE, as well as um, the manuscript that formed the core of the collaboration between us. We'll be speaking about manuscript abbreviations and their relationship to handwritten text recognition. And then finally, about combining those automatic transcriptions and material evidence from the manuscript studies and giving some future directions. The um, digital, medieval, digital medieval studies have advanced in interesting uh, and exciting ways in recent years um, in the analysis of the manuscript as a material object. We can think about multi and, and hyperspectral imaging, digital paleography, hand classification, skybal attribution, etc., as well as a storytelling with metadata from manuscript collections or extracted information from texts or editions of texts. Such analyses foreground issues of scale introducing not only distant readings, but extra close and extra distant readings into the study of medieval textual cultures. In our presentation today, we would like, we'd be like, we would like to address the question of the unread and the unreadable through a discussion of research we've been undertaking in 2020 in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. We know from various webinars this summer across the GLAM sector that transcription and metadata creation have garnered a significant amount of attention in a time of social distance. This spring, we focused our attention on what we could do in isolation remotely and what, with the kind of time and attention span that we might not otherwise have had in a regular work year. The slow focus on creating quote unquote ground truth for neural automatic transcription systems for texts in Latin has led us to rethink what transcription really means for pre-modern pre writing systems and has produced some very interesting results for setting a corpus of Parisian Bibles. Often the notion of the unread is used with a Meridian connotation, pointing to all the texts we don't have in our possession or we haven't had the time to read, uh, or in the medieval case, perhaps, that once existed but might not be extant today. We'd like to focus on a different unread, however, within medieval manuscripts that make up the core of our research and our paper today. This uh, unread has always been there beneath our eyes. Um, it is unread in the sense that most medievalists prefer to resolve it or to uncollapse it. We're speaking about the abbreviation. In our paper, we examine machine reading abbreviations using the HTR, the handwritten text recognition platform, Transcribus. This process has required us to think carefully about the implicit literacies of the medievalist when we read and digitize manuscripts and to take the way that a text is written in a handwritten document quite literally. Before delving into our discussion of machine reading abbreviations, we would like to say a few words about the collaboration that brought us together on this project. Just a few months after opening in November 2017, the Louvre Abu Dhabi created a research department within the Scientific Curatorial and Collection Management Directorate. Its objective is to develop a new research platform to spearhead museum studies in Abu Dhabi and to encourage academic research in areas reflecting the institution co uh, core mission. To achieve these goals, a research center and a laboratory, the first laboratory dedicated to the analysis and determination of artworks, materials in the United Arab Emirates, are being developed and four main areas of activity were identified. The study of the collections within the context of a global and connected history of art, the study of the preservation of the collections, the study of the museum's impact and reception based on socio-economic methods, and exploration of issues relating to translation that are inherent in, in this necessarily multilingual museum. In each of these areas, care will be taken to foster development of the digital humanities. Routing the museum in its local, regional, and international academic environment is crucial to the Louvre Abu Dhabi, and the teams are developing projects in partnership with local centers of research, including NYU Abu Dhabi, with, which has been in operation since 2010. NYU Abu Dhabi, located just down the road on the same island, has digital research projects across campus in photography, sound, literature, history, and Gulf studies, arguably one of the stronger concentrations of digital humanities research among research universities in the Middle East region. 
Its Center for Digital Scholarship was established in 2013 to partner with faculty and funded research projects. A professor in digital humanities was hired in 2016, and a Winter Institute in Digital Humanities was funded by Risley and Russell, head of the Center for Digital Scholarship in early 2020, to foster and grow digital humanities community building for NYUAD, the NYU network, and regional audiences. It was in the context of the preparations of the Winter Institute that the two authors of this paper met for the first time. Sharing a mutual interest in medieval manuscripts and digital humanities, we took the opportunity of the already digitized manuscripts held in the Louvre Library Collection to develop this project in applied computer, computer vision. Our case study uses a 13th century Latin Bible in two volumes following the Paris tradition held in the Louvre Abu Dhabi collection under the number LAD 2013.051 and exhibited in the permanent galleries of the museum in rotation with other manuscripts. The revision of the Christian scriptures under the influence of the University of Paris around 1220 resulted in a corrected text with books following one another in a standard order introduced by prologues and divided into chapters. It is a common version of this Parisian text beginning with the Epistle of Saint Jerome to Paul and the prologue to the Pentateuch before Genesis that these manuscripts contain. The biblical texts are preceded by prologues and the text ends with the interpretation of Hebrew names. This Bible has a very regular script and page layout, which, in the absence of a colophon, makes it almost impossible to date and to determine exact provenance. As often, when paleography and textual clues fail, the medievalists have looked to the decoration, which, in our case, has been compared to other manuscripts from the Rhone region. One of the unread characteristics of Bibles, such as the Lad manuscript, that we believe deserves more attention, is the way that the experts characterize the text and script as uniform. When we looked more carefully at the text inside a single manuscript while making transcriptions for the machine learning exercise, we realized how much variance in uniformity actually exists. This, in turn, made us focus on another part of the scribal process, not the variance in the hands, as projects such as Digipal did, but rather the particular use of the abbreviations and letter forms, S and long S, D and insular D, R and R rotunda. We change from one manuscript to another, or even between parts of the same manuscript. We believe that a quantitative and comparative approach to the micro features of these Bible manuscripts has great promise. To give you an example of what we are talking about, let us show you a comparison between our transcription, a kind of radical diplomatic transcription that preserves abbreviations and letter forms of Genesis uh, 1 in the LAD manuscript, and another machine-generated and human-corrected one from the BNF uh, smith le Swift 19. We will limit ourselves to only four aspects of the language. First, examples of the use of, the, of a macron, the bar sitting atop a letter in a word such as autem. Um, in the second line are marked in red. We have come to see the macron as a kind of movable uh, feast in, the, in medieval manuscripts. It occurs in combination with different letters and in this case collapses those letters in ways that we believe correspond to different scribal habits. A similar phenomenon is formed in the initial lines with Fakiem and Est. A second example of variance shown below, highlighted in purple, is that of the many repeated words of the biblical text like Est and Autem above. Here we have highlighted Super, Quod and Sub which have multiple ways of being abbreviated, even within the same folio. The third example of variation expands on the second and concerns multiple word strings in which very different orthographies are used. If we think the way that computational string matching might work, this could prove to be quite difficult in the absence of a dictionary or of different abbreviated spellings. The problem is that among these variant abbreviations, some of them are used repeatedly across the manuscript as a stand-in for another word, but others are not. The last example of variation can be found underlined in the passage. In the first case, Spiritus Domini is used in one, whereas Spiritus Dei is used in the other. The other includes a variant form, Afferentem, that is totally absent from the Light Bible.
If we extrapolate from two transcriptions of two documents that contain the same text, that is, of the Latin Bible, to hundreds and hundreds of folios that the many extant Paris Bibles have, we expect to find different combinations of different forms of variants. Their location in the word, in the line, in the sentence, even in the recurrence of different abbreviations of the same word. Hyman and Kay have called the medieval Latin manuscript a compound puzzle with three major difficulties. A foreign language, a highly abbreviated fashion of writing, and unfamiliar scripts. We hypothesize that by automating the process of transcription, the abbreviation at scale might provide us access to some patterns in Bibles that indicate provenance, perhaps from the same scriptorium, the same region or order, or more abstractly, from the same reading community. Before we move on to describing the process of mapping characters to abbreviations, I'd like to just expand on the fourth category of variants that we mentioned above. The, the process of creating pages of transcriptions is later is really labor intensive, and we worked with the digital text of the Vulgate alongside. As we advanced in this process, it became obvious that the text of the LAD manuscript, the LAD manuscript, was not a verbatim copy of the Vulgate, but in, instead contained micro features that reflected Old Latin, that is, pre Vulgate versions of the Bible cited in, in patristic writings. In some cases, this was as simple as one word, as in the example from Smith, Smith Leswaif 19, Genesis 1 12, cited by my colleague Afferentum, echoing texts by of uncertain attribution to Augustine, or St. Gregory, or, Saint, or Bede's Hexameron, and commentaries on creation. But the LAD Bible uh, exhibits similar variants uh, in places where wording departs from the Vulgate. Um, uh, showing this kind of lingering influence of the early fathers, um, uh, quoting the Vetus, that we think must have been living on in the oral culture of contemporary sermoning. Uh, these, there are some examples that are on the screen here. Um, so far, through a combination of human close reading and automatically transcribed passages in the manuscript, we have identified many cases of subtle variants, and this is just in a few folios of Genesis alone, that send us off to homilies for monks, to Gothic breviaries, even to contemporary sermons. The traces of a Vulgate text are not verified sources, but instead they are suggestive of a milieu of scribal practices and literacies that find their way into the written Parisian Bible. Of course, the ones on the screen that you're seeing here were actually found by human beings doing the reading, but it is encouraging to us that the first one that we represented to you from Smith Le Soif 19 is actually one that was found by automatic reading. Now, let us be clear, it's not that we couldn't have found these by human reading alone, but the subtle differences, their sparsity throughout the manuscript, and the sheer scale and difficulty of reading in manuscripts are major obstacles for doing so. The process of this machine, of, of creating ground truth and then carrying out the machine reading, led us into new territory for reception history and understanding scribal practices that we probably would not have been able to discover on our own given how time consuming the process is. The abbreviation in medieval studies is typically framed as a skill of medieval literacy in order to be able to read in manuscript. Abbreviations are something to learn, understand, decode, and then encode or uncollapse, usually when making a transcription or an edition. Many research tools exist, such as the Capelli, the famous white reference book on many medievalist shelves but also now available in digitized form thanks to the Ad Fontes project at the University of Zurich. In thinking through our research process, it occurred to us that most researchers do not use abbreviations as features that can be useful in and of themselves, but as a problem to resolve to understand the meaning of the text, even to mark as an expansion in a critical edition to indicate how the editor has interpreted the abbreviation. Our theoretical potential on working with abbreviations has been different. Not as a hermeneutical act, understanding the text and putting aside reading in manuscript, but instead situating reading in a context of what appears in manuscripts and interpreting with the help of the machine, working with much more material than we would be able to ourselves. We believe that the abbreviations found in our case study manuscripts, along with the letter forms, are worth a closer look. In the case of charters, the use of S and long S, D and insular D, has been studied by Stutman and led to a classification and assertions about textual evolution. Yet, this study was based on manual encoding. 
and conning, which, if possible in the case of charters, is not an option when working with manuscripts made of many hundreds of folios. Computational linguists have been calling for the representation of manuscript reality in medieval corpora for some time by encoding linguistic, paleographic, and codicological features in digital editions. This approach, of course, sees value in editing pre-modern texts, but wishes for them to be able, uh, available in unaltered form so that the non-normalized complexity can be also used for research purposes, creating an automated transcription of a manuscript is not the same as digitizing it. Rather, it is creating an imperfect representation of it, with all the limitations of any computational model, in order to be able to analyze that text. Our project, however, does not preclude the eventual editing of works, but our focus at present is on creating actionable transcriptions for computational reading. To train an HER model for the Gothic hand of Parisian Bible, we first needed to create a transcription of a handful of folios. That transcription needed to represent the manuscript reality in a one-to-one -one relationship. It is quite possible to use an expanded abbreviation in an HTR transcription as the machine learning process is language independent. If FAQIE were transcribed as FAQIEM, the model could eventually be trained, but it would limit our ability to dis distinguish between FAQIE, FAQIE, and FAQIEM, where the three forms present in the manuscript. Since we are interested in these micro features, countable micro features, as Herman and the co authors call them in the article Revisite revisiting style, the kind of transcription that we required is a kind of radical diplomatic transcription. We mentioned Capelli's lexicon abbreviaturarum above, but turning to it for examples of the most common abbreviations and letter forms was not particularly helpful. It is important to remember that Capelli is an all-purpose reference work that aspires to spatial temporal breadth, as well as examples of abbreviations stemming from medieval genres. In our case, we were working with one domain, Bibles, and a relatively constrained space and time from which they emerge. To carry out our transcription, we turned to version 4.0 of the Medieval Unicode Font Initiative, with which we faced several issues. Most of the MUFI Unicode set does not appear in our manuscript, and most of the MUFI Unicode does not visualize in the text editors or in the transcription window of transcribers. Finally, using MUFI increases exponentially the number of special characters, whereas the Parisian Bible only uses a small number of different abbreviations. We identified about 40 special characters used as abbreviations. Superscript characters, which are placed on top of letters, the so-called combining letters of Unicode, some special characters and special letter forms, and finally, superscript letters. The first and the third groups can be found on many letters and we discover new possibilities on every page we transcribe. Had we used the, the MUFI, it would have given hundreds of possibilities where we have about only 40. We opted for a simple, adaptable Unicode solution that is pragmatic given the HTR system, but also that output text that is easily visualized in plain text format. Much of the archival material worked on by Transcribus users is early modern, but not necessarily pre-modern. Some of the largest user groups are European archives in Dutch, Danish, German, and Latin, especially where legacy fonts and complex writing systems or hands, such as fracture, chancery, or notorial hands, make archival research particularly slow and complex. Training a model in Transcribus for the LAD Gothic Bible was a multi-step process. We trained our first model using Tobias Hodel's model for 13th to 15th century Gothic hands as a base model um, on uh, eight folios of the beginning of Genesis. The base model also uh, expanded its character set um, to include additional characters like the Macron and other abbreviations, which were directly relevant to the kind of abbreviations and letter forms that we had. The model produced rather good initial results with a character error rate of 4.52%. We were very pleasantly surprised at the distinction between letter forms long S and S, R and rotund R, D and insular D were recognized almost perfectly. We encountered some repeated errors while training, uh, confusion between the macron and the accent, the difficulty to disambiguate repeated minims. 
which incidentally I also have when I read a manuscript, uh, confusion with TCO in medial positions of words, uh, etc. We decided to carry out um, the correction and retraining process using an additional 16 folios, uh, including the dual prologue of the Epistle of St. Jerome to Paul and the prologue to the Pentateuch, the continuation of Genesis and parts of Exodus. To end our presentation, what we'd like to do is present some preliminary results as to how we've applied our HT model, HDR model from the LAD Bible to three others. The caveat, of course, is that the digital text of those additional Bibles was not human corrected and so does contain some errors. In a later stage of our work, we'll be working on a more general model that will be able to move from the LAD hand to others in the same domain with greater accuracy. From the ground truth creation one manuscript that of the LAD, we decided to try our model on three other manuscripts, uh, Latin 40, Latin 10, 421, and Smithless Wave 19, all digitized in high resolution. The three are dated from the 13th century and follow the same Parisian tradition. Interestingly, two of them have been located, uh, SL 19 from Cambrai of Tournay, uh, in L and Latin 40 from the south of Italy, and the scribes have been identified as well. It is interesting to note that Latin 40 and Latin 10, 421 are slightly smaller than the LED manuscript, and the SL19 is about half the size, and it could be described as one of the portable Bibles, that, the, the production of which flourished in the, in the 13th century. An analysis of the comparable chunks of text, the double prologue Genesis and Exodus, produced interesting results. In the case of the abbreviation Insular DN, um, that would include various inflections of domino. A concordance density plot of the four manuscripts illustrates a concentration of forms of DN versus DOMIN um, that are very, very different. It is particularly clear here that scribes do not use the same kinds of abbreviations for the same text, whereas the scribe of SL19 almost always uses the abbreviated form of domino, DN. The scribe of Louvre Abu Dhabi manuscript and Latin 10421 uh, use more often the extended version of domino. On the other hand, both forms appear in similar numbers throughout uh, Latin 40, but not in the same parts of the text. We carried out similar analysis, finding um, comparable results um, with sunt and sunt with uh, the n replaced by a macron, in and the n replaced by a macron, and et et, and the uh, um, ampersand sign. And we didn't find exactly the same kinds of um, issues as we did find with uh, dn and domino, but very interesting ones nonetheless. In future work, we're going to move beyond frequency plots to think about how um, qu uh, questions such as collocation with specific words, sequences of words, abbreviation, placement on the line, as well as the frequency of abbreviations in zones where the manuscript has been corrected. At first glance, we can say that the lines that have been corrected in the LAD manuscript seem to have a higher density of abbreviations than normal, but such a claim needs to be substantiated by more systematic study. Even though the model has a higher error rate for the three manuscripts from the BNF, we can still distinguish some persistent features. Thus, the letter R in its rotunda form, Unicode A75B, seems to always appear after the letters B, O, and P, which coincides with what other scholars have previously described. However, we also find the R rotunda after some other letters, such as the Y, the H, most of the time in the form of CH, and even the insular D. Yet, the use of the R rotunda after the Y seems to be exclusive to the Light Bible. We have spot-checked the other manuscripts, and it appears that the few hits we found with the automatic transcription are mistakes from the model. We would, of course, need to continue training the model to get a better accuracy and extend the analysis to the full manuscripts as well as other Bibles, but those few results are promising. The use of the R rotunda form when not after B, O, and P, might indicate particular scribal habits. We were also interested in the distribution of some of the abbreviations. At the case study, we chose the Macron, which is probably the most frequent of them. We were interested in knowing on top of which letters the, this Macron was found and how often. Once again, would we find differences between the manuscripts? 
the letter N and M are clearly the letters on top of which the Macron comes the Macron comes most of the time with about half of the total hits, followed by the Q, the P, the R, and the T. Yet, we can note a difference between the manuscripts. The SL19 uses the Macron almost three times more than the other manuscripts on the N and the Q, two times more on top of the M. It is relevant with the observations made earlier in this paper, though. This manuscript seems to be much more abbreviated than the other three, probably due to its smaller size. It is also interesting to note that the Latin 10 4 to 1 diverges from the other manuscripts when it comes to the Macron of top, on top of the R rotunda and the T. The Latin 40 is different with almost no Macron on top of the R rotunda. The numbers could be the result of from an error, could be the result from an error of the model though. Looking at the statistics, it is also interesting to note that the letters most used in the text are not necessarily the ones that are the most abbreviated. Except in the case of the word in, the I is almost never abbreviated with a Macron, between 0.10 and 0.15% only. Yet this letter is used more than twice than the N and the M. Those two letters are abbreviated more often, but we can obviously note some differences between the manuscripts. The M is abbreviated 2.6% of the times in the Latin 10 4 to 1, and almost 11% of the times in the SL19. The N is abbreviated 4.3% uh, of the times in the Latin 10 4 to 1, and 13% of the time in the uh, SL19. Um, once again, we know that the SL19 seems to be much more abbreviated than the other manuscripts, which are quite similar in terms of percentages of abbreviation. What we've been talking about thus far involves the position of letter forms and abbreviations in specific places inside the Parisian Bibles. Since we've generated digital transcriptions of the Bibles that preserve those abbreviations and variations in letter forms, there are other kinds of digital textual analysis that we can perform. Take, for example, stylometry, the statistical analysis of documents based on the ways that they use words at different frequencies. This set of methods has been used in many different world languages to examine questions of authorship, genre, or even collaboration in writing, which can be shown to be correlated to word usage, in particular to high-frequency word usage. For the novice, we might describe stylometry as a kind of textual forensics that helps us understand variance in texts. Using the stylo package for R, we analyze the difference between the texts of the two Bibles, LAD and SL19, by slicing each of them into sequential 2,000 word segments and compared these some 60 files together. We performed a principal components analysis, an application of linear algebra to analyze the variance in our different texts, a procedure common in exploratory data analysis, or EDA. A PCA allows for data that exists in many dimensions to be reduced down to the two or three most significant ones. When we visualize such a PCA, we're on the lookout for clusters or groupings. It's quite easy to see how the abbreviated text in LAD, marked in red, and SL19 in green cluster together on opposite sides of the graph. On the other hand, if we look more closely, we find subclusters, as we would intuitively expect, since the transcribed text that we actually use corresponds to four different texts, the two medieval prologues and two separate texts of the Pentateuch, in which we would expect to find different word frequencies. As we mentioned above, we used our revised HTR model to transcribe automatically three additional manuscripts, Latin 40, Latin 10, 4, 2, 1, and Smith Le Swift 19. The next step in our exploratory data analysis was to design to mitigate against the flattening effect of putting all of the different sections of text together in the same bag of words. So we separated the transcription for the different texts uh, into three different files, the prologues, Genesis, and Exodus, and performed the same stylometric analysis used above with the same slicing method again looking at five grams or five letter sequences. The results are predictably much more complex. Since the previous plot on the previous slide can be difficult to read with the text superimposed, we have changed the visualization here to symbols, a blue circle, a pink triangle, a green plus sign, and a red X in the plot, representing each of those symbols, one of the manuscripts. 
This image is the same PCA matrix that we saw before, but in which I have highlighted the clusters using colored circles. The smaller orange oval surrounds the segments of Genesis from SL19, whereas the larger one in orange indicates text from Exodus in the same manuscript. What's worth noticing here is how the stylometric analysis seems to corroborate the analysis presented above, uh, above about abbreviations. SL19 is a very differently abbreviated Bible from all the others, most likely due to its brevity and format. The yellow circle surrounds the text from Genesis from Latin 10.421, an example, another example of outliers that are worth investigating further. Inside the light blue circle, we find the segments from Genesis from both LAD and Latin 40. So far, the visible clusters that I've described so far uh, correspond either to a signal of manuscript or to a book of the Bible. This is oddly not the case, however, of the purple circle that surrounds but does not fully define a cluster of the medieval prologues. I say oddly because one might expect that language to be significantly different as a medieval text rather than a Latin translation of the Hebrew Pentateuch. Finally, the dark green circle is a more elusive formation, mostly uh, containing Exodus uh, excerpts. Um, except for the part that overlaps with the purple circle, where we have mostly Genesis. But these are from three different manuscripts, Latin 40, 10421, and the LED. There is some faint separation by text, but it would seem that the signal of the original text is stronger than the abbreviation style specific to the manuscript. Such analysis is common in cytometry. The mixed signals picked up by exploratory data analysis are invitations to dig deeper, separate out specific segments, and to close read and distant read them yet again. At the Medieval Canon of the Digital Age conference at Ghent University in late 2018, one of the main themes of the conference rationale suggested that the gap between computational textual criticism and the material codicological turn in medieval studies might be beginning to close. Jerome de Gossen offered a, a case study of scribal emendations in Hildegard von Bingen manuscripts that illustrate how the two approaches are definitely complementary. Our paper has indeed argued and demonstrated that there is room for an object-oriented materialist approach to be brought into dialogue with scaled, distant machine learn learning-based approaches. One of the obvious uses of such automatic transcription would be the creation of larger contexts in which we can retell the history of the mass production of Bibles in the 13th century. But the resources for carrying out such research are significant, and the approach really calls for a collective effort. In the case of the Parisian Bible, the corpus is, however, available and digitized, and we have a workable starting point for such an, um, a project. Directions for our future work include highlighting very specific scribal habits in order to facilitate dating and localization of Bibles, applying our model to more manuscripts, training it on them, and correcting those automatic transcriptions, and finally, sharing our model with others in order to participate in the same research project. Thank you for your attention.